Hi, I'm Karen Hodgins, creator of Nifty Numbers, Math Medley, and Gelling with Geometry Family Math Night Kits. And in this video, I'm going to share with you my latest Family Math Night collaborative project, Planet Earth. Now, how cute is that? Um, looks like a little topiary plant. So, I got the idea for this project because the Family Math Night event was on Earth Day. And I wanted to tie the project into that. And because uh, my state of California is in its fourth year of a pretty severe drought, um, I wanted to also incorporate some um, water conservation as well. Okay, so we'll get to that part of it. But first, um, let me explain to you how I did the activity. And you're gonna need to gather some materials. So first, you're going to need um, tissue paper. And I chose um, two different shades of blue and two different shades of green. And then you'll need some white also for Antarctica. Um, you're gonna need um, tag board or um, cardstock in green and blue. And it's really important that it's cardstock and not construction paper because we're gonna be putting a lot of glue on this and the construction paper doesn't hold up very well. Okay, you may need um, some tracing paper. Um, you're going to need glue, and I like to use um, these, these lids to put my glue in um, at the event. Um, and then at the end of the event, I get to recycle these. And what's really neat is that um, when I let the glue dry overnight, the leftover glue dry overnight, and then the next day I can just peel out the glue that's in there, like that, just peel it out, and then I get to use them over again. So, um, recycling. Um, you're going to need a pair of really good scissors. Um, you're going to need some of the tools um, that the participants are going to use to put the tissue paper on the cardstock. And um, a pencil is a good uh, tool. Um, these pencils here, notice they don't have any tips. So the participants could have used um, either end to put on their tissue paper. I'll show you how to do that. Um, if you have pencils that do have tips, and obviously they can use the other end, but you want it to be kind of flat up there. Now an option that I discovered too is um, maybe um, chopsticks might work um, for that if you don't have access to pencils. <laughs> um, you're going to need the, uh, the table tent. Um, and the table tent and uh, the water facts are available for you um, in PDF form on our website at familymathnight.com under the um, resources hosting the Family Math Night Collaborative Project link. So that's all there for you. Um, you're going to need a, um, a foam ball, and I used a six inch foam ball, and then um, I needed to get um, a globe. Okay, so this is a six inch globe, and I needed to do that because um, that was how um, I'm going to transfer the continents onto um, our foam ball over here, and that's where uh, the tissue paper um, comes in. So what I did is I cut out, some, or not tissue paper, but tracing paper. I cut out some of the tracing paper, and then um, obviously I traced um, my continents on here, okay? and then I cut those out. And here is Africa. I cut those out and I really relied on uh, the equator. Okay, can you see the equator? I really relied on the equator for my placement, for the placement of um, the continent. And keep in mind that this is not about perfection. So um, I very, very quickly traced um, Africa um, in, uh, um, because knowing that when we put all the tissue paper on it, um, it's not going to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, look at this, look how beautiful that is. You can see North and South America there, and then Africa over here, little Madagascar. So, um, you know, uh, um, you get the gist of it without being uh, too, uh, too uh, focused on the details. Okay, and then you're gonna need to take this, um, uh, your uh, cardstock, and you're gonna need to cut it into one inch by two inch rectangles, just like that, a whole bunch of them. Um, and then a whole bunch of the um, blue ones as well. Then you're going to need to cut your tissue paper into um, one and a half inch squares. Now I do have um, the white tissue paper here. The white tissue paper is for Antarctica, which 
it's hard for you to see, but it's under there. Um, I didn't have the participants do Antarctica. I actually had my station facilitator do that part in advance um, because I only, the participants had the green and the blue um, cardstock to work with. So um, this was actually not on the table. Um, the other thing that my uh, station facilitator, she's a high school student, she did a fabulous job, but um, she also, in advance, once all the continents and the little islands and stuff were on here, she actually glued the tissue paper to some of, um, besides Antarctica, I think she put like little Madagascar, she did that one on her own, and maybe a couple of other things in advance. So when the participants came in, Antarctica was done, little Madagascar and whatever else. Um, those are really smaller islands, um, and it was just easier um, to do it that way. Um, but when the but this is what the participants do. So they come in um, to the table, and I had the table uh, tents obviously um, spread out on the table. So I'm just going to read to you what it says here. So it says choose a two inch by one inch piece of cardstock, green for earth or blue for water. Okay. Um, using either the green earth or the blue water colored tissue paper, wrap one piece of tissue paper around, what did I say, over the top of the pencil and dip this end into the glue. Okay. And some of them have already done this kind of a project anyways, they're going to dip that into the glue. Now they're going to take their um, uh, tissue paper and they're going to, I don't know if you can see this, um, okay, let me do it up here. Um, they're just going to press firmly, okay, onto it like that and then leave it on there like that. See how that turns out? And they're going to keep doing that until they have something that looks like this. Okay, so there's one. That's, that's all done. And then it says, um, continue wrapping tissue and gluing to the cardstock until the cardstock is completely covered. Hand your tissue covered cardstock the station facilitator who will add it to our planet Earth. So what she did is she collected these and she put them all up on the stage. Um, and um, she would go over periodically and whoops, and start adding them to, uh, to the globe. Now, um, she wanted to wait until uh, some of them dried just a little bit because this is where your uh, very good pair of scissors comes in because obviously you're going to need to make some curves and some adjustments into, this is very rectangular, not everything on the, the globe, right, is rectangular. So she would use the scissors then to cut and shape this out however she needed to, to do that. And I'm just not gonna do it here, but, and then of course she put it on there. And that's why the scissors need to be um, a really good pair of scissors. And at the end of the evening, this is exactly what we had. It was just beautiful. It was fun for the participants to watch the whole thing come together as a collaboration, right? Um, okay, so um, if you're familiar with our family math kits, you know that we have, um, the stations are set up beginning with three activities, beginning, intermediate, and advanced. Um, so I kept that theme when I did the questions, the math questions here on the card, because um, now we're gonna get into some of the math of it. So this is kind of where I tied in the water conservation, um, and that's where this poster comes in. So 70% um, uh, of the Earth's surface is covered in water. Um, that water, okay, is 97% seawater. And I, I created this because it's a very visual representation of, um, of the, of the type of water that we have on our planet Earth, it's seawater, 97% of that. Okay, that's very visual. You can get this is some decimals here as well, because this is a 10 by 10 grid, so it's a real easy way to tie in um, your decimals, and then of course your percentages. 2% um, of that water is glaciers, and 1%, actually it's a little bit less than 1%, but 1% of that water is actually fresh, fresh usable water um, for us. So you can see here very clearly that the amount of fresh water that we have available to us um, is very, very small. And so it's super, super important that we take care um, of that water. So then I had a whole bunch of water facts on here. Um, and the source 
for the, um, the sources for the water facts are on the PDF on the website. But for example, um, it takes 18 gallons of water to grow one apple. Now to give them an idea of what 18 gallons of water was, I actually had a gallon um, um, next to the poster so that they could um, make um, that reference. And by the way, one gallon of water weighs eight pounds. So they could lift that up too and say, wow, that's eight pounds, that's pretty heavy. Um, and then um, it takes 1,800 gallons of water for a single steak. And that's, you know, um, it's a lot of water. So there's a whole bunch of different facts on there that they got to um, talk to their um, parents about. And then um, the math questions at the bottom of the table tent. So the beginning question is, a dairy cow needs to drink two gallons of water to make one gallon of milk. How much water does she need to drink to make two gallons of milk, three gallons of milk? Do you notice a pattern? And it was really fun because I saw one mom sitting there working with her, um, her first grader, and she actually had, um, she actually had, she used the, the, uh, the tissue paper to kind of illustrate this. So Dairy County needs to drink two gallons of water. So she had these as the water, two gallons of water to make one gallon of milk. And she represented it like that. And then she put the next layer down there. So she had two more there and one more of the green and so forth. She was helping her child look for the patterns in that. It was really fun to watch that whole interaction. Okay, at the intermediate level, it says, each week, elementary schools use an average of 300,000 gallons of water. How many gallons do they use in two weeks, three weeks? And challenge how many do they use in one year I like to throw those challenge in there for the kids who need it now normally I have uh, paper and pencil um, at the table for them to number crunch this time I actually had individual whiteboards um, and it was really interesting to see um, kids really want to write on the whiteboards right so it was a great way to get them to solve some of these problems using um, the whiteboards and then at the advanced, a leaky faucet dripping 20 times a minute will waste 700 gallons of water a year. How many gallons will be wasted if that faucet leaked one drip per second? Okay. Um, and I have a challenge. So we're using a six inch foam ball and I actually did this problem to figure out how many of the, car the two by ones I needed to, um, to cut out. But we're using a six inch foam ball to make our planet Earth. Using the surface area formula, which is four times pi times the radius squared, calculate the number of one inch by two inch rectangles needed to cover our globe. So a lot of really great number crunching out. And later I thought of this one. If 70% of the Earth's surface is water, how many of those two by ones do we need to make blue? Okay, so just another challenge on top of that. So um, all in all, it was a really super fun project. Um, kids love to see their little pieces being added to the globe. And of course, look how beautiful that is. So this is gonna go in the, in the front office to share with everybody. So um, enjoy the project.